Hi there, I'm Leanne Vanderputten, mother of 11, grandmother of 41 and counting, from Finer Femininity, where I share with you tidbits of old-fashioned goodness and wholesomeness to help us on the path to being joyful, traditional, feminine Catholic women. Today we're going to talk about a cheerful Catholic morning routine. How important is it to wake up on the right side of the bed? And what does that mean? Waking up on the right side of the bed is a choice. It's a choice we make every day, whether our bed is pushed against the wall and there's only one way out. Because each morning is the dawn of a new day that God has given us. It is up to us how we receive it. And for a Catholic woman, it is a choice that doesn't just affect ourselves. No, the ripple effects of those first few minutes of the day will affect all the members of the household, each of their walks of life, the people they encounter, etc., etc. And our children will pass on our habits to their own children. So, are our first moments of the day important? A resounding yes. Insignificant beginnings have tremendous consequences. I'm going to give you an example of a good way to start your day as a Catholic woman, wife, and mother. It is something I have strived for. The first thing to do in the morning is to say that morning offering. We must memorize this. The reason we must memorize it is because we may get woken up. Uh, let's rephrase that. We probably will get woken up by a child who is crying, who needs a diaper change, and, of course, a lot of times it's our baby who wants to nurse, etc. Whatever it is we have to attend to when our feet hit the ground, we need to attend to it. And while we are attending to it, we say our morning offering. Whether it is sitting nursing the baby or running to get a diaper, it doesn't matter. We get that in. We can say the rest of our prayers when we can snatch a few moments. It is great if you can get up a few minutes before the kids to say your prayers. I have a link in the description below as well as a video on what I say for morning prayers. The prayers don't have to be long, but we must try to think of them as we say them. It's not always possible to get up before the kids, and I know that. I have had 11 children, and oftentimes I was woken up by the baby or one of the kids. But the day does start smoother if you can possibly get up a little earlier before the hubbub begins. If you are woken up and you can't say all your prayers right away, do not forget them. Every morning we may be tempted to put off our prayers until later or skip them altogether because we have so much to do and action is where it is at. If we allow the devil to win in this very first struggle of the day, he will win many more of the battles throughout the day. Our morning prayers, whether they be said while nursing that baby or changing that diaper, need to be a priority and the very foundation of our daily life. So after prayers, next I would wake up the kids. I'd try to do this cheerfully. Oftentimes I would go upstairs, turn on the light, and sing to them a couple lines from the song, Good Morning, from the movie Singing in the Rain. I know that's a bit weird, and my kids thought so too, and they would grumble as I woke them up. But I think they did appreciate it, and I noticed that they tell others about it to this day. Another thing I try to do is to cheerily wish them a good morning when they actually emerged from their beds and made their way downstairs. I don't know what it is, but my kids find it hard to say good morning. They must get it from hubby, who is a man of little words. His family wasn't a good morning type family. My family wasn't too much either, but we were better at it. I think it is a common courtesy to greet one another in the morning. And I think it should be practiced just like thank you and your welcome should be used in the home. What will a cheery good morning do for them? It will echo in the minds and the hearts of our families because a cheery word sets the tone for the day. The little flower says, a word or a smile is often enough to put fresh life in a despondent soul. What is truly amazing is that we, as wives and mothers, have the power to do just that. Put freshness in a despondent soul, and several times a day. 
When my kids were small, I knew that if they were to learn how important morning prayers are and how to actually say them, it would be up to me, and it would have to be consistent. So I would gather them up around my knees. I'd sit. They would kneel in front of me, hands prayerfully clasped, and heads and bodies bobbing and wriggling around, and they would repeat after me. Dear Jesus, I offer you everything I do today. Please help me be a good girl and a good boy today. Thank you for everything today. God bless mommy, daddy, brother, sister, etc. You may have their morning prayer routine. If you don't, look up a simple one, one that includes the things that need to be in morning prayers for little people. Then say the guardian angel prayer and three Hail Marys. Don't make this prayer time too long for them. You don't want them to dread their prayers. In time, as they get older, they will branch out and use a prayer book to do a longer set of morning prayers. But for now, keep it short, including the important things for the day. Now everyone's day is off to a good start. By doing these things each morning as consistently as possible, you can be assured of God's assistance in your day. Remember the little flower's words, quote, Jesus loves a cheerful heart. He loves persons who are always smiling, end quote. Your soul may be out of sorts. Perhaps your body, your mind is out of sorts as well. How much more efficacious are the efforts you put in to make the morning routine as cheerful as possible? And doing this will lift our own mood to look at things in a more positive light. Father Irala from Achieving Peace of Heart says, The central powerhouse which supplies current to our organs is optimism, either instinctive, in other words it comes naturally, or acquired, meaning that we can learn and practice the art of optimism, even if it doesn't come naturally. So make your morning routine count. Start off on the right foot. Pass that optimism down to those you love. It will greatly pay off. Finer femininity quote for the day. Every moment of every day, I have the chance to choose between cynicism and joy. Every thought I have can be cynical or joyful. Every word I speak can be cynical or joyful. Every action can be cynical or joyful. Increasingly, I am aware of all these possible choices and increasingly I discover that every choice for joy in turn reveals more joy and offers more reason to make life a true celebration in the house of the Father. And that was Father Henry Newman. Thank you for tuning in today. Come and visit me at my Finer Femininity website. I have a Facebook page too where I share with you inspirations of all kinds. I also have lots of beautiful handcrafted items in my Meadows of Grace shop. Look for those links in the description below. May God bless you and Our Lady cover you with her mantle. Saint Anne, pray for us.